Welcome to Hey Man, I'm Josh. I am Jacob. Hey man. Hey man, what's up? How you doing? Good, man. I, you, you saw me. I was tired last night. When you we were, were at, dude. God, are we, I, I think it's just because I didn't eat all day. So I had just like no energy or sustenance. We went and got Rubio's tacos, which you have to go get. Good. My point. I woke up right away. And I was like, well, maybe I was just. You were a little grumpy at the house. Uh, I was a little grumpy and a little aggro. Yeah, for you sure. You were a little grumpy. A little I was aggro. a little tired. I, I do want to say, by the way, dude, let me just right off the bat. First of all, business, right? Stand in all business. We got to get to this real quick. Yoskis. What great shows in Richmond. This yeah. Week. Oh, my God. First, thank you all so much for coming out. Me, Jacob Wolf, Lee Syatt. Yo, I want to tell you, dude. I had on purpose not watched you for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. You are getting so much better. Yeah, I had a really, I had a really fun time in Richmond. There was some really good energy at every single show, and I felt, I felt really good going on stage each time. Yeah, you're getting so much better. I want to tell you that I'm super proud of you. Ah, uh, you are getting so much better. Thank you. You did say something to me in the green room, which felt like a joke, but kind of not a joke, where you were like. I was like, yeah, I, I'm not going to come out. Uh, um, and you were like, cool, don't come out. That way you won't tell me everything I did wrong. In it, this was, it absolutely <laughs> was a joke. I was like, oh, maybe I'm giving too many notes. It absolutely was okay, a joke. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but I want to tell you, you are getting so much better. I'm so proud of you. Dude. I appreciate it. It's really very cool to watch. I want to tell you something else. I learned something from you this weekend. I... Oh, uh, dude, this was such an important lesson. Oh boy, comedically. Mm. Hey, but before I, well, let me just do this first yeah. because I, dude, it meant, oh, it was such a, I, I can't explain how much it meant. So I'm watching you. And I want, listen, I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to throw an apology out there, but I want to tell everybody who's seen me over the last six months where I've put the guitar down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yo, it's, mm, I don't know how to, because it's not an apology because my, I, 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 even at my stage and how long I've been doing it, you know me, dude, mm -hmm. I'm always trying to get better. Oh yeah. I'm always trying to learn. I'm always trying to figure out what the best version of me is. Um, and so in the last six months, I really tried to mm, take the performance down. Not as in make it worse, but right. like less performancy, more conversational. And I've always felt conversational. Right. But there's a, a hint of performance because I'm on stage. Mm -hmm. And I think that took, because one thing I will say that my shows have always been, they've always been full of energy um, and full of fun mm -hmm. and full of, and 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 the audience should feel like they're just watching a friend of theirs in their living room telling them some stories. Right. If you saw me over the last six months, up until that first show Saturday night, because that's mm -hmm. when I came and watched you, right? Yep. You saw me a little too conversational. You saw me a little too low on the energy. You... I would get to certain parts of my set where I was used to still seeing people sitting up straight front of their chair, leaning in. Right. But, but yo, I dictate the energy. And uh -huh. be because I had started to sit down and I had started to relax, I could see people getting a little more relaxed, a little more tired's not the right word, but just like not full, filled with the energy that I wanted them to be filled with. They didn't look as like attentive. Uh, very or like, attentive, or like dude. edge of their seat kind of thing. It just didn't feel the energy in the room that I'm used to feeling. Okay. I watched you. And well, one of the things, dude, that, you know, that I've always been envy, not envious of, but, but, but loved, um, about you is your unbridled enthusiasm, um, and energy when you do things. Mm -hmm. And, um, I watched you on stage and deliver these jokes like you wanted the audience to hear them. What do you mean by that? Just that. 
I okay. have something I want to tell you. It's a really, I've always tried to do that. Yo, guys, I have a story. In order for me to tell a story and make it feel like it's the first time I'm telling the story, which is important because I want the audience to feel like they're hearing it for the first time. Right. I have to, like an actor, get myself in there and be like, okay, oh, dude, these are my friends. I got to tell these people this story. Right? Right. I, like, we're buddies. I want to tell you this story. Mm -hmm. And I think I had just gotten a little comfortable. I don't know the right word to put it on there. But I will tell you, I promise you, that is 1,000% gone. It's a, You might not... Listen, I, I don't even know if an audience member would... Could, Notice. I will. You definitely will. I will. And I will tell you, Saturday night early, I had a fucking great set. Yeah. Saturday night late, I had a great set. But I, I watching you reminded me, you're such a good... You're such a good... You're so good for me, regardless of me loving you and obviously us being buddies and mm. how much fun it is. But having you out there and your young comic energy is so good for me. It was so good. So thank you so much. You're welcome. I feel like, and, and, and this is just me thinking from an outside, I feel like you're looking at young you and you're remembering why you love to do this so much. And you're remembering how excited you were. Like, honestly, I think the reason my energy is elevated in the last couple of weeks is because I finally figured out a cadence and for a joke and the way I'm supposed to say something and the certain wording. So I'm excited to go out there and tell it because I'm excited that I've, that well, we collaboratively have figured out something that you and I have been trying to figure out for at least six months. Mm -hmm. We've gone, I've tried a bunch of different things, bunch of different words, bunch of different sentences. And one weekend it finally settled on something. And now I'm just working around that and making it better. So mm -hmm. I'm just, I think it's just, I'm excited to finally put it on stage and feel good about that part of the joke because every time it didn't, it would hit, it wouldn't hit, it would hit, it wouldn't hit. I'm like, oh, I want it to hit every fucking time. Mm -hmm. And now it hits every fucking time. Yeah. And so I think it's just, it, it's just me being excited about, you know, it's, it's like a, it's like a cornerstone or a milestone. Yeah. It's just me finally getting to up my stage time just that much more, which I enjoy. Yeah, dude. I, I yeah. It, 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 listen, this week, we're in Indianapolis. Week after, Vancouver. Uh, I'm filming my special up there. But the sh it, we're back. Mm -hmm. not, look, look, not that anybody had a bad I didn't, We weren't putting on bad shows before. No. Even, it just was different. I've, I've been, like I said, I, I am not lazy with my craft. I constantly write, and I constantly tinker. And if you come see me a year later, you're going to see new material. And part of that is ju that's just who I want to be as an artist. Um, and so I'm constantly tinkering, sometimes too too much. Right. So sometimes too much. Anyways, uh, so super psyched uh, about all of that that's going on. Um, super psyched about Indianapolis this weekend. Super psyched. By the way, if you're in Indianapolis, I am looking for a gym to work out in while I'm there. Hit us uh, I can look to see if there's a, an EOS there. Because oh, mm, let's go to a real gym. Dude, you, <laughs> you've never even walked into an EOS. The EOS by me yeah. is a good gym. It's got an outdoor workout area, powerlifting stations. It's got an outdoor workout area? Yeah. Oh, I love an outdoor workout area. Now I'm not taking you, so... What does EOS stand for? Edge on sports? Nah, I was trying to think of something like, like eat something shit but like it's gotta a, be sports i don't know what it is they, they call it eos and i'm like eos is worse than eos yeah, like just like call EOS. it eos yeah, yeah. but yeah so like the gym is actually really nice okay but so i have guest privileges so if there's an eos anywhere in the country i can go in and i can bring your old ass with me for free whoa on the old ass i p older, older gentleman ass i p r today let me just tell you something and then we'll get into this shit. Yeah, I have to get into something before you get into whatever. You ready for this? Sure. I, I'm a, okay. Guys, a year ago today, a year ago, I was 100 and, what, was I even your weight a year ago? Maybe I was starting to get healthier. Yeah, this is when we were in Australia last year. It was around, yeah, right here. We were, we were just like on our third or fourth day in Perth. So I was starting to get healthy around that. Yeah. So we'll go a year and a half. A year and a half ago, guys, I was 145 pounds. I was not feeling well. I was worried 
for the first time ever mm-hmm. for my the, my the future of my health. Mm. I couldn't figure anything out. You know, dude, I'm a pretty healthy dude and always have been. Yeah. So it's like I don't can't quite figure it out. I want you to I want you to know I rededicated myself to to the gym and all this shit and guys, I'm 54, man. All right. I I on my sixth set, bro. Six set deadlift. Bro. 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 Ready for this? Six set? Bro, bro tato chip. Ready for this? Bro yep. tato chip? <clears throat> Sixth set, 245. Four of them. It's pretty good. I had just done 225 the set before. Uh, the hex bar or regular bar? Regular bar. Oh, nice. Regular bar. Four. Yo, I, I without a doubt, could have put 25s on either side. They got a, on 295? A fuck yes. I 100% can do that. You should just go for a one rep, one rep PR. I would really be. In, you could definitely do. It. If you could do, how many do you think you could do at two ninety five? <sighs> well, two? this was. Well, that would. I'll been, show you been, the video. I'm going to post the video, everybody. That would have been set seven had you done two ninety five. Yeah, but I a hundred percent could have put those twenty fives on either side. Uh, there's no doubt. It was that. The only thing is my grip. Yeah, I got to get used to holding that much weight. But dude, I am. I, I'm going to tell you guys right now, and then we're going to get into the yuck yucks and the ha ha's. Hey, you can fucking do it. You can do it. You can do it. You're never too old, man. You're never too old. And it, I, I, look, man, I, I think I figured something out. Okay. Do you believe in manifestation and all that shit? Yeah, a little bit. I believe it with you because you do manifest stuff. Yeah, I mean, I do. Okay. I do, that's why I, like, I, I do a little bit. I've tried manifesting winning lottery numbers for a long time. That hasn't worked yet. Let me tell you something <laughs> because I th- I've naturally manifested. Let me tell you when I look back. Okay, when we were in LA and all those years we had no money, mm-hmm. right? My, But we were never without. Right when it came to the point where I was like, well, we're going to have to leave this town. I'd get a job Mm -hmm. or something would happen. Mm -hmm. But my truth was I always in my brain knew something will come up. I'll find something to keep, right. Keep us afloat. So what, so, but my career was keeping us afloat. Right. Because that's what I believed in my heart is what I did. I I would always find something. I was never worried, dude. I never let that stress me because I was like, I'll find some, yo dude at Laurelwood. There were, Two times that I can tell you, I sent a check and said to your mom, we have $5. I hope something happens in the next couple of weeks. Something happened in the next couple of weeks? Something happened. Nice. I, I, so I, I, okay. So I, I believe that when you think, oh, this is the dude who I, this is who I am. This is, I honestly think one of the reasons why I don't sell arenas and all, it's never been important to me. That part has never been important to me. When I picture myself doing stand up, I've never pictured myself. You know what I like? I like I like telling jokes. I like I like seeing the people. I like being in there. I love the energy. Mm-hmm. I, would I love to play an arena? Would I love to sell an arena? Yeah, now thinking about it now. Yes, but I've always pictured myself in a comedy club having fun with the people who come to see me. Right. Is it coincidence that that that's where I am? I don't know. Okay? Fair enough. I'll tell you something about this. About this one of the reasons, and I think I figured this out today, that I am healthy and I, no, dude, this is what I'm, I put a lot of, I, and I think I always have, you tell me from the outside looking in, I think I've always put a lot of energy into this. To find this. Exercise. Y- Correct. You've been working out five days a week since I can remember. And you've been, you guys were the first people on that I can remember the gluten free train, yeah. the grain free, yeah. the 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 organics, only Trader Joe's. Never really went to like. I mean, Ralph's ended up carrying organic stuff, but back when organic had just kind of started, Ralph's wasn't there yet. Yeah, we needed cheap organic, which was Trader, Trader Joe's. Joe's, and so it was only Trader Joe's. It was every now and then if you really needed something like special, you'd be at Whole Foods, but it was never anything different. You worked out five days a week. You walked the dog for at least an hour a day when you were in town. Um, dude, but I visualize the only thing I visualize, I don't visualize me in, fr- in front of an arena. As a matter of fact, when I try to, I don't, I can't even picture myself. You end up in a comedy club? No, nope, neither. I, I mm. it's, it's, 
when I picture, I can see you. When I picture the arena or performing, you know what? I, this is so weird. I can see you. I can see your face. I can see the crowd. I can see you going, ladies and gentlemen, the way you do it. My dad, Josh Wolf. And then I can only see the back of somebody walking to the stage, waving and hugging you. I never see my face. Is that fucking weird? It's interesting. But when this morning, when I was like, I'm on PR, and I was, I was in my journal and meditating, I could picture myself. I saw my face. I saw me. But I, doing that. Yeah. Is that I, weird? Is I, that I think... I think that's you telling your brain something. I think, or your brain telling you something. I think that's you because, like you just said, like you, you love doing stand up. And would you want to do it in arenas and sell out a 10,000 seat arena? Absolutely. Yeah. That would be sick. But just the other week, you even said, look, I'll put myself up against anybody right now. Put me in a 350 seat comedy club. I'm the best comic in the world. Well, I don't know in if that. I said I'm the best well, comic in the world. Not but. well, but like, but like in that, no, in that scenario, not in the theater, not in like an arena. Yeah, I don't know if I'm the best comic in the world, but, but I, I'm no, not but you, competing with anyone else, but I. Right. But yes. like you were like, I'm so confident in my yes. ability and what I do in this 300 to 350 person room yeah. that I, I would put myself up against almost anyone. And so I think for yourself, like, yes, you want to do the arenas and you want to do the theaters. But right now, I think where your brain is at is that like right now, this like your that visualization is your brain saying, this is gonna happen. But right now, you're loving where you are and what you're doing at this place. So your face will show up when your brain has been like, you know what? This this is now what I expect. Interesting. That's why you've only seen the back of somebody and not your front. Interesting. And then the, the days you start to see the front of your face is when you start to really push and realize and go, this is the next level yeah. of what I want to do. Yeah. And, and just to be clear, guys, I don't compare myself to anybody else. I yeah. I, 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 I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, I apologize. I compare myself to me. That's yeah. the only person I compare myself to. Yeah. My bad. I, you, yeah. But my, no worries. No worries. You don't have to apologize. Um, but yeah, dude, super interesting. Okay. Hold on, I'm sorry. I have been trying so hard to focus. Go. I hate that fucking hat. Oh, dude, this is. I hate that fucking hat. I hate it. Yo, dude, I. You know how much I like it. You wear it. I bought two. Originally, no, no, you bought one for me, and then I said I hated the hat, and now you have two. Yeah, and and you know what? I like it. it. It is such a cool. It's a wolf. It just looks like you went. You're a white girl who went to coach. Like that's this is my white girl Coachella hat. No, it's not a hat. That's the tattoo I see on white girls after they go to Coachella. They're like, I did some drugs and had an eye opening experience, and then they get a black. They either get a watercolor or a black and white wolf on them. Yo, dude, I bought this with Elton Caste in New Mexico, and I was like, he was like, I can't believe you're buying that hat. I go, you know what? I'm buying two. And he was like, that's the worst purchase. But I'm we're, I'm now wearing two purchases that you hate. I'm over the glasses. Already? Yeah, it's over. I've seen you in them repeatedly. For, but you've seen me in this hat for years. Yeah, I fucking hate that hat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I fucking hate that hat. It's such a good hat. It's it a might wolf. be the worst hat you've ever purchased. <laughs> it might be the worst hat ever made. Like it, yeah. You love this hat. I hate that hat. I tried to get you to wear it one time. Never put it on a single time. You what? Tell me what you love about you. Okay, let's just break it down. Do you like wolves? It's our last name. Yeah. Okay. Do you like? I hate the watercolor. The, water, the watercolor just looks stupid. Watercolor? It's like a watercolor. As you're seeing, like a watercolor tattoo. It's just a bunch of different like colors, kind of like splattered, yeah. in, like a watercolor painting. Like, I just don't like the way it looks. Plus, what's up with the green, yellow vomit background? Why don't you just leave it black or do white? Like, it's just... It's provocative. No, it's gross. It gets the people going. I did it, it right. It gets the people going away from the store that's selling. Are them. you kidding me? Obviously not. Some of us bought two. One of you bought two. <laughs> I can guarantee you... I could stand in that store for an entire day and not a single person would pick up that hat. I feel this like this is a very New Mexico where I bought it. This feels very New Mexico. You bought a bow and arrow in a gas station. Yes, though. I like, did. That's... I bought a bow and arrow, a bong, a cowboy hat, um, beef jerky, Chinese food, and one of those, sh 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 you know, the jackets with the, with the oh, tassel tassel jackets. Yeah. I bought some fireworks. I bought a ruffled shirt. This gas station had Good it all, station. dude. This gas station had yeah, it all. Except the hat. That this, hat but different hat. Different oh, gas station. Oh, that fucking hat is terrible. 
Okay. I mean, listen. I, I, just wanted, I just wanted to bring it up. It was so hard for me to focus for most of this because I'm like, we're talking about stuff, and he's really into this, and he's the only one talking for this 15 minutes, and all I can do is Thanks focus that. on that hat. All I kept doing was looking at that hat. Oh, my God. So I, I, had to, I had to get that off my chest. I hate that fucking thing. I think there's a chance that I wear it every week now. You could. <laughs> You could. By the way, for but those, one, but one weekend you're gonna forget it at a hotel. No, no. I mean, just wear it every week in the pod, so you can stare at it. You're gonna forget it at the pod too. How would I forget it at the pod? I'm, I'm wearing. Throw it. it away and burn it. That's how you're gonna forget it at the pod. I, I dude. I you would, have a second one. You won't mind missing one. I think the world would be a better place without one of those hats on it. Yeah, but I'm not going home without a hat on. I'll bring you a spare hat, or you bring a spare hat. You bring a spare hat. I, I actually. Think I, mean, I, I don't need a spare. I hat. actually think I have a spare hat in my car. <laughs> I don't need a spare hat. This hat, you by just, the way, you just need to get rid of that hat. Yay or nay, everybody, on this particular hat, especially with these glasses. Come on, this is a dude. Fucking... There's no like the. There's no. There's so many different colors on that hat, but yet yeah, there's no color that matches the orange and your it orange yellow with matches glasses. the glasses. No, it doesn't. it doesn't. You don't have any idea. What are you wearing? Is that mine? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you gave it to me a long time well, ago. I was like, wait a second, I'm going to make fun of you what you're wearing, but is that mine? Can I be honest? <laughs> this is one of my favorite Dude, crew necks. I love you it. know why? Yes. It's a crew neck with a pocket. That's though. why I liked it too. Oh, oh my God. It's one of my... Crew neck. My... Dude, I, yo, this is my PSA. Crew neck right? sweatshirt. Crew neck sweaters with pockets. Sweatshirt! Start... Crew neck sweatshirt! <laughs> sweatshirt! Start making... <laughs> crew neck sweatshirt! Go ahead. Please start making more crew neck sweaters with pockets. I would really, <laughs> really appreciate it. They're the fucking best. Because sometimes I don't want a hood. Agreed. But I want on a long sleeve, I want everything to have a pocket. Agreed. And also, those of you who make hoodies without pockets, shame on you. Dude, this one, <laughs> shame sans on you. pocket. I do this all the fucking time. Shame on you. But here's the deal. I agree with you. Should be more crew neck sweatshirts. Sweaters. <sighs> I believe you, if, we, if we're judging by... The people's reaction, Dude, you were wrong. Tomato, tomato. I like saying it because it still pisses you off, even yes. though you won the argument. Yeah. Like, even though you won the argument, I still say it, and you still get angry about it. You're right. I'm going to stop. No, you're not. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> now, that little inside and out relationship, that's how that works. <laughs> He's been, you know what's funny? I think it's easier for me to get on nerves, on your nerves, playing your game because you've been so used to me, mom, Caitlin, everybody getting, like, you getting on our nerves for the games that you used to play with us. Yeah. And now that we all know the games and are reversing Why don't you tell them what the games are? So my dad likes to do this thing where he acts like he doesn't hear us. Like, I'll say, like, hey, man, like, like what's, like, you know, I'll say something. He'll go, what? And I'll repeat it. And he'll go, what? And I'll repeat it really loud and slow. And he'll just start laughing or go, what again? I'm just trying to see how many times I can get them to say the same thing over yeah, and over Yeah, he just, or like he says things incorrectly because we don't like them. Or where are specific things that I don't like because I hate them. Yeah. That hat. Yeah. Um, and so I have now flipped the script and I'm starting to do the games on him because I, look, I'm, I, at this point, I'm used to it. I fall for it every now and then. I'm not going to lie. That's like, because I'll give you that. There are times I fall for it and I'm like, God damn it. Why am I still talking to you? <laughs> like, <laughs> Why am I playing this stupid game? <laughs> Yo, the, but, you, those things fuel me. And they're so funny though, because I do them too. And they're, can I tell you? They're ridiculously funny. But what? doing them to you because you did them to me my whole entire life growing up is beautiful. But I think it gets under your skin a little bit more is because you're not used to us playing the games on you. You're right. And it's fucking great. Can I tell you who the master is? My mom? No. No, no. Can I tell you who the master is at playing little games with people to bother them? And who, who is my absolute idol doing it is Joey Diaz. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Joey Diaz. The best thing about Joe Diaz is that he's in the torture business. Right. He likes to mentally torture you. And, and if, you, if I called him right now, I bet you I would be like, hey, Joey, how many people are you currently torturing? And you'd be like, I probably got five or six Probably fucking torturing five or six people. Like I mean, that. he tortured at least I have for, or not torture, but he but, like. But he 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 plays the long game, and he doesn't need to see the joke work, right? To know that it's working, right? These are all great things. Yeah, but I I remember watching him and him gaining such pleasure out of it, and I was like, I'm gonna start to do that. That looks like a lot of fun. So I do it to my friends. I it's do it to people, like I do it to people who. 
I meet in public. I do it to people who work for the airlines. I don't do the what game, but there's a lot of different games like with servers. Mm -hmm. I, I'll do. I Har like fuck, har harmless things. I like harmless fucking things. with people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I like fucking with people. So, yeah. so it's been a ton of fun. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for following. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, oh, also, just on another side note, I'm making pork belly tonight. You are? I bought uh, 1.3 pounds of pork belly, and I'm going to cook it for dinner. Pretty excited. Bring me a little. Okay. To the airport tonight. Okay. I'm thinking about just driving to your house. Come on over. Like, it's a 30-minute drive, but, like, I don't spend the money on an Uber. Yep. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, come on over, dude. I think I'm just going to drive. Yeah, come on over. Um, and here's another last thing I want to say that I think is good for both of us that we need to work on. Um, and that Freddie Prinz Jr., um, when I was podcasting with him, used to try to hammer into my head. Okay. I, I'm, and I slipped a little bit. Well, we're kind people. Yeah. We have to remember that being kind and being nice, two different things. Yes. And that we can't sacrifice ourselves to be nice. You can still be kind and speak up for yourself and say no or yeah or not criticize but or, or however but kind not nice is something that moving forward i want to make sure that i remember to be all right because you can still be in a bad mood and still be crabby but you can still be kind to people i'm always kind to people but nice implies that you'll give up a little bit of yourself you might do something you don't want to do you might be you're, because you're trying to be nice to somebody mm -hmm. Nah, I'm gonna be kind, mm -hmm. but like, I I have to remember what the priorities are, and not to lose myself in the nicety. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. All right, dude. Let's hear what you got, and then and then I'll uh, I got a couple of things I want to talk about. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> I read this headline today, and it, my imagination just started going. I love it. Did you see that Hulk Hogan pulled a woman from a car crash in Florida? Oh yeah, brother. Like a oh, Matt, dude. So. So the, that's amazing, dude. First of all, shout out Hulk Hogan. Dude's did like, he lift the car up? Dude's like seventy. No, actually, he did the most un Hulk Hogan thing I've ever heard of. He went to the car. The airplanes were still deployed, so the woman behind the steering wheel was kind of trapped because, like, you know, those things don't deploy; they're just kind of pushing you against the back of the seat. This dude, for some reason, had a ballpoint pen on him. Mm -hmm. Walks up autographs. To, great point. Walks up to the window and punctures the airbag with the ballpoint pen and pulls her out of the car. She was alive and everything was good. A couple bruises, but nothing like like major but could you just imagine sitting there thinking you're going to suffocate behind an airbag and then it just deflates and you go oh i can't wait to see you save me and you just say you're doing okay in there brother like i'd like you just see wait. 70 year old hulk hogan pulling you from a car by the way would i would have actually thought that i had died and, and somehow gone, i was gone, in heaven yeah, yeah. yeah. but That's let me amazing. ask save you from a car there was no burning. There was no... It, it didn't seem like it, but it seemed like it was... So not saved, but just like pulled out of the yeah, wreckage. Yeah, pulled pull, pull the woman okay. from a car. Okay. I mean, ain't that might, running into a fire. No, but it okay. might be saved because if that airbag doesn't deflate, she sits there and, and could have some breathing troubles. Okay. Assisted. I mean, I'm not... Assisted. Assisted. Yeah, I'm not diminishing, but let's not... He's not the dude who ran back into yeah, the fire. Don't, don't give him a fucking purple heart yeah, for it or he's anything. Not, but he, like, he didn't run back in to save the puppy in the burning Right, right, yeah, right, yeah. right. But still. But still. 100%. Hulk Hogan didn't have to yep. pull over for doing doubt, whatever Hulk Hogan does. Yep. I agree. I agree. To pull, to pull someone from a car. I agree. Which I think is awesome. But it made me What think, if he had taken his headband out and tied it around her wrist and pulled her out that way? Oh, my God. That's how he pulls somebody out of a burning building. He goes, yeah, brother. Dude, I just like, I think it was, like, I just think about it. Like. I started my, like I said, my imagination started going in a situation, hypothetical, if you're in that situation, who are you hoping pulls you out of it? Or like mm -hmm. if someone, like if you come out of that and you look up, you're like, oh, I feel safe in this. Like everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And who do you put in that same scenario where you don't feel safe? Do you know what I'm saying? Okay. Let me ask you a couple questions okay. before I answer this. Is it the same Hulk Hogan scenario? No burning building? No, it's just an airbag? <sighs> Because then I'm, I'm gonna, I guess, I guess, I'm, then I'm gonna pick Dave Grohl because I'd like to talk to him. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But I don't. But if it's like a burning building, I'm not picking Dave Grohl. I guess. No, no offense, Dave Grohl. Yeah, I, I guess just for the hypothetical, let's up the car crash a notch. Okay. I'm not saying full blown fire, but like I guess above the, like a rollover crash. 
But like is the, the are they saving me, dude? Like, here's what I'm asking you: Are they saving me? Like, do they need to rescue me from the car? Because by the time the emergency people get there, I'm not. I'm gonna be dead. Or is it just they're pulling me out five minutes earlier than the ambulance would? No, okay. I guess in this situation, we'll go. It's life or death. Okay. Where they have to get you out, or if you're not out in time, the, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So who makes you like who? Who are you hoping comes to the, the rock? The rock. That's a great answer. It's not even close. The rock. It's not even close to rock. Not only do I think that he could lift whatever the fuck he needed to lift up if he needed to. Dude could rip like like anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. Not only that, I think he's gonna come with a good one liner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like like if I'm at a burning car, the door gets ripped off and he puts his head in and he's like, Hot enough for you? Let's get you <laughs> out of here. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, fuck the rock. Not only is he saving my life. But he just dropped a one-liner on me. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, I mean, I'm going rock. I would love to rock. Do you know who I don't want to see? Kevin Hart. <laughs> I like how you picked. I like how because they're kind of like like a like a duo. I love I how think, you picked that. I think Kevin Hart walks up to the door handle and he's like, ah, that's hot. ah, that's hot, and he tries to put his hand and like in a touch. Ah, and then hot. he ends up calling the rock for I help. I think he probably does. Yeah, he probably yeah. facetimes the rock and is like, rock. What do I do, rock? I'm not going to try to do the, his voice because someone's going to accuse me of being racist, but I'm going to He'd be like, Rock, how do I get him out? And then The Rock teleports because I think The Rock can teleport. And he fucking throws Kevin over the bridge and he rescues me. But I go... <laughs> I like I like the throwing the Kevin over the bridge. I go, Rock and Kevin Hart is... I just can't... I just, Look, man. Mine are so different, I can't even begin. Can I tell you right now? Kevin Hart, to me, makes me laugh when he blinks twice. That dude makes me yeah, laugh. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah. He straight up makes me laugh, and I don't understand the hate people give him. But as far as anything life saving, or anything I need, like maybe advice or anything serious, he is the dead last person you would call. Yeah, dude. Listen, I don't, I don't think he, that I could throw him on my back and hike him up a mountain. I don't want him rescuing me from a car. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think the person who I would feel as safe, no, not feel the safest, but I think the person who I would feel safe with, but also think it would be fucking awesome, would be Matthew McConaughey. Oh, great call. Because I think McConaughey's still in good enough shape to be able to get me out of a scenario, but also imagine him coming up to me and he just, he's like, and he goes, all right, all right, all right. How are you feeling in there? Like, I think he would also drop a one line and just kind of like. He would make, he would calm so you calm. down. I would be so calm. I feel like I'd be sitting in one of those Lincoln commercials with oh, him. Dude, like, he, like, and then he would just like, I just imagine that like, because he's every way here he walks or talks, he just looks like he's in a movie. Do you know what I'm saying? So I could just imagine him like firemen carrying me out of the fucking car. The car explodes behind me, but it's just like this slow mo fucking, you know, like cool guys don't look at explosions kind of vibes. And I, so I think McConaughey would be really fun. Yeah. Uh, would be super awesome. And you know what? He would come in and he'd be like, all right, all right, all right. And he'd look around and he'd go, we're going to get you out of here, brother. Yeah. He, I, he would say something like, I'll tell you what. It's hot in here, but the heat has nothing to do with the clouds in Singapore on a Thursday. <laughs> and you'd be like, what the oh, fuck oh. is happening? I don't know why he said that, but yeah. I feel really good about life right yeah, now. Yeah, like, dude. And some, I like this. Your, next thing you know, your seatbelt would be. Yeah. I, I imagined like with him, like in high school, that's how he would undo a girl's bra. He, he would like, he would, <laughs> he would be like, he, the next thing you knew, he'd be like, hey, uh, are you having fun here at the party? I'll tell you what. Next Tuesday, you know, sometimes when you ride a horse, the horse bucks you off, and sometimes you have breakfast. Pop, and the bra comes off. And the next thing you know, you're like, how the fuck? Or, or he says it, and then they take 10 minutes to think about it, and by the time they're done thinking about it, it's like, yeah, yeah. This I, dude is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's a master. McConaughey, I think is, I love that. I'm in, that's the boat I'm in. Good. The last person I think I want to see trying to rescue me from a car would probably be Paris Hilton. Really? What in the f world is Paris Hilton going to do for me in a life or death situation in can, a car? Can I, can I offer? Actually, I might have some offers too. Okay. Now that I think about it. I think actually I she, might her standing by the side of the road. Some dudes are going to pull over. Yeah. I was also, I actually minus that she probably has big ass security guards with her. Yeah. She doesn't drive herself. She definitely has a ring that could pop the or she's got Airbag a nail too. kit or something with yeah. like files. I actually take that back. Paris Hilton might be yeah, might be a good one. Uh, Paris isn't the last because I feel like she's probably a little tougher than Kevin too. She actually mentally, also, physically, she, she may just have some gadgets in her purse 
or anything with her that just might be able to cut through something or get me out of a sticky situation. So you know what? I take that back. Yeah. I think Paris might actually be Paris. Beneficial. She's not the she's not at the top of the list, but she's not the bottom. Yeah. Oh, let me think about that one again. Yeah. Because I, I said it out loud and I was like, she might have big bodyguards with her. She's probably in a big car. She does her nails a lot, so she might have something sharp to cut the seatbelt. I don't yeah. know. I actually changed my mind. That, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of like, like, like I other can actors. You, I can tell you mine. You just said Kevin Hart. But I can tell you who would be a second. Who? Andrew Garfield. What? He was fucking Spider-Man. Yeah, dude, but he's, he's no muscle tone. And he, nah, he was Spider-Man and the worst Spider-Man. Toby's the worst Spider-Man. Get the fuck out of here Toby, right now. Toby's the worst Spider-Man. What are you saying out loud in public? Do you need me to say it louder and slower? You, so rank, Toby Maguire oh is the God. worst Spider-Man. So you go Tom Holland, Andrew Garfield, Toby Maguire. Oh my God! For I, I'm going to give you Tom Holland. Tom, and, and it, look, this is hard for me because you, it, my, I'm, I'm walking away from my, 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 my generation. You can't debate Tom Holland. I agree. He's funnier than Toby. He's the epitome of that. Superhero. I, I agree. I agree. I He's agree. the epitome of that superhero. But Stanley even said Tom yeah. Holland was born to play Spider Man. I agree. He didn't say shit about Toby Maguire. Yeah. And Andrew <sighs> Garfield was born to play Oliver from the play Oliver. Yo, him and Hacksaw Ridge, though, was really good. I'm going to give him that. Uh, false. Why? Now, now, he might have been good, but Hacksaw Ridge was a bunch of doo doos, too. Oh, I disagree. You talking about the dude just who, running across the battlefield without a gun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I dude. love that. Yeah, okay. I thought that was a great movie. Yeah. I, I'm not... I, and I don't... Look, man. Andrew Garfield is wildly successful and more successful than I will probably ever be in my life. <laughs> I just don't think that he's... the. I think he's the third best Spider-Man. That being said, it's like saying when I tell you LeBron's second. When you're second all time ever, that's not a knock. Right. No. So when I say also, Andrew, th all of them are one of three people to play ever, a certain, ever. It's like the people to play Superman, ever. people to play Batman. Like you're ever. one of a very few ever. Yeah. So three. it's not a. It's like to no. say that he's third. It's like it's like criticizing NBA basketball players when they miss a free throw. It's like, dude, I would make that. Dude, yeah. are you getting paid thirty million dollars yeah, in four years to play professional basketball? No, you should shut up. I, I yeah, yeah. But so that being said, I just judging him against. I bet you he would come in third if they took a nationwide vote. No. Well, well I mean, he, he is the only Spider-Man to lose the girl. But that was part of the deal, yeah. Yeah. I like animated Spider-Man Miles Dude. better than Andrew isn't Garfield. He, isn't he voiced by, like, Jake something? Uh, no, he Jake Johnson... Played another guy in the new. Oh, oh in, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. You know, I, I think the I still haven't seen the newest one. It's great. Uh, I hear it's great, and I really want to watch it. It's on Netflix. So, so if you're it, so. you're saying you think the Andrew Garfield Spider Man movies are better than the Tobey Maguire Spider Man movies? I didn't say that. I didn't say that at all. You think I just said that I thought Andrew Garfield was a better Spider Man than Tobey Maguire? Why? He's not funnier. Disagree. What? What? I like the villain. I like I like I like the villains way more and the storyline and how it all plays out. And I like I just like I like the earlier Spider-Mans, the Tobey Maguire yeah. Spider-Mans. Like I love the villains. The upside down kiss is iconic. And the Green Goblin is hard to beat for a supervillain. He's also just played so well. Um I, but I don't know. I just I I enjoyed watching Garfield on screen more than I enjoyed watching Toby. Okay. Because when I think of Spider Man, I think of a kid. I think of a. I think of a high school kid. I think of a high school kid who, or a college kid, yeah. who gets bitten completely by accident on yeah, a. Complete... Toby might have been thirty when he was playing. Toby looked like he was forty. <laughs> Toby looked like he was forty yeah, when he, he was might... supposed to be twenty five. <laughs> yeah, he might have been. A no little... dig on Toby again. Like, yeah. Like. Yeah. Uh, I, again, you are more successful. I love his sixth sense for paparazzi. It makes me laugh. Have you seen those videos of Toby with paparazzi? No. But he's been dealing with paparazzi. I though. know, but nowadays when to paparazzi gets around Toby, like he can, he doesn't, like they'll be behind him and he can just sense them. And you'll just see in the video him turn around like this and go, by the and way, stare down paparazzi. There was one time where a paparazzi was like, following him and they tripped over something or something happened and they panned it back up to him and he was like laughing at them. It was like, I, his beef with the paparazzi is the funniest thing. Do you? It's so funny. Would you go far so far to say he has a spidey sense? Oh, 100%. 
Oh, the best Spider-Man, second best Spider-Man has a Spidey it. sense. No. Andrew Garfield. Well, he's also had fame for longer than the other why two. Why does though? Andrew Garfield, why is he playing Spider-Man with no muscle tone? That body. Let me tell you something. This is what bothered me about that original. He, he's supposed to be like this nerdy outcast you kid. You got bit by a spider and now you're jacked. I don't think that's, I think he just got bit by the spider. And Matt, isn't did, he jacked a little bit? Well, but is that what happened? Did the spider, the spider bites him and he gets muscle? No, yeah, I think dude, the spider bites him and he gets Toby ducking. wakes up the next morning and he's ding, ding, ding. Tom Holland wakes up the next morning. He's like, ding, ding, ding. I also will say. Andrew Garfield like wakes Andrew, up the next morning. It's like zero muscle tone Johnny. But also, didn't he have to build a contraption to shoot webs? The, a different Spider-Man, amazing Spider-Man and the other Spider-Man. One has it built in and one doesn't. I believe that's true also. Matt? Are you guys talking about comic accurate? Yes. Or movie? Comic, comic accurate. Comic accurate. All right. Comic accurate. Garfield's much closer to the comic book version. But uh, in the movies, getting bitten by the spider instantly jacks you up. Yes. So Thank Okay, but you. that's but that's in the movies. Comically correct. Gar what happened to Garfield is more it, but dude, we here's the problem. It's like you know the first Aquaman? Yeah, I saw like half of it. You stuff. know the only problem I had with Amber Heard? And I'm going to go back to, um, and I'll put Andrew Garfield in here. I'm putting Reese Witherspoon in the movie Wild and Amber Heard. Here's the thing. If you, Amber Heard, this was the only problem I had with her in that movie. If you are a god, a god. You should be muscular. Who swims all the time. You have no muscle tone. Everybody yeah. else around you is fucking jacked. At least put her in like and a. And you, you look like. Put her in a buff suit. Like do something. Something. So I got a problem with that. It's the same thing. Andrew Garfield, you got to be jacked. Yo, Reese Witherspoon did a movie called Wild. I loved the book, dude. The book was fucking crazy. The movie was so cool. I was so excited to see her see it, to see her do it. She's such a great actress. Supposedly, she's out on this trail for, I think, 90 days. No change in your muscle tone? Interesting. You, you, didn't, you didn't want to just put six weeks in to get your legs a little jacked or your arms a little jacked. So I believe that you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, that kind of stuff bothers me, man. And you know what? It's a continuity thing. Look, I suspend disbelief all the time. Mm. All the time. We all do for movies. Mm. But, but that's kind of thing where I'm like, what am I looking at? Mm. I'm going to suspend my disbelief that these people can fly and swim underwater. But you're telling me there's no muscle tone on the gods who swim underwater? Nah. But take, take that. Just no, no muscle tone on the gods. Yeah. Period. Yeah. End of sentence. Yeah. That's it. Yep. Like, yeah, yeah, that, that. Because if you look at any statue or anything depicted in, in mythology in that category, they're all buff. Yo, or dude. they're all extremely gorgeous, but still toned. Like, yeah. it's like they're gods. Yeah. They're supposed yeah, to be yeah. the epitome of what man looks like. Or, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. So, with you. no, I, I understand that. But, but yeah, Tobey Maguire for sure. Rank your Spider Man. Spider Man. Rank your Spider Man. Yeah. You're going Andrew at the bottom? Yeah, Andrew Fair at enough. the bottom. Yeah, yeah. He feels like a bottom. He, <laughs> he looks like a bottom. <laughs> Whoa, Andrew Garfield. So sorry. He just so said sorry, that. But come on the podcast and let's talk about I it. I don't think you look like a bot. But let but come on the podcast. Let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is my shout to Andrew Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not the best shout, but yeah, yeah, hey yeah. man. Um, and, yeah. and all that being said, again, I think again, he's a wonderful artist. I still think artist. he's a great actor. I do too. A wonderful artist. He's done a bunch, a bunch of good shit. You nothing. just happened to mention the two movies. I liked his movies. I also happen to hear nothing but good things about him. I hear he's a super nice dude. By the way, and I like those Spider-Man movies. You know I like superhero shit. I just didn't like Harper Grinch. He's still... Here's the thing also. Me bagging on Toby is not that I don't like Toby and I don't like those Spider-Man movies. Again, those two dudes are a specific breed of people who were picked to be one character that's only been played by three people yeah. ever since. Yeah. So they're a specific breed and those movies were still when the fucking Marvel Universe was good. Yeah. Marvel Universe now cannot wait to watch Echo. Cannot I don't, I just don't, I wait. Just, you don't want to watch Echo? Are you laughing at Echo? You don't want to watch Echo? Let's hear it. Let's yeah, hear it. Tell me, tell me, Matt. Uh, so I watched the first episode. And? No. Yeah. <laughs> really? I told you. I told you. Uh, are you not going to want to finish it? Probably not. Yeah, oh, is it I that told bad? you. I told I'm you. I'm going to have to watch it. Marvel, I'll report look, back. And I got, I, that, dude, after Endgame, for me, that was it. No, dude, that Black Widow movie was fucking so good. For me, after Endgame was it. That, those 27 or 30 movies or whatever it was, in that chronological order, watching it 
to go see Endgame in theaters, nothing for me beats that. That era of Marvel is unbeaten. Have you forever. watched the Hawkeye show? But I thought that was doo doo stew. As this is a spinoff of that. The first 20 minutes of the first episode of Echo is basically just rehashed mm. stuff from Hawkeye. You're definitely not watching it now. I did not love Hawkeye. Oh, you know what I want to watch, though? That new TED series on Peacock. Fuck yeah. Oh, my God. Let's watch yeah. it on the road this weekend. Fuck yeah. Great yeah, idea. yeah, yeah, yeah. I idea. love that. Dude, I think that's awesome. You know what I was thinking about the other day? Huh? Because um, we've been talking a lot about, like, the 80s and growing up. Yeah. And how things, you know, different. like, we never wore helmets on bikes or, and, and by the way, we should have. Yeah. We ne- but we never wore like helmets. You know what I was thinking that we did that I can't imagine you guys. Oh, God. Is this another throwing darts at people? No, although I had a lot of people talk about how they used to shoot each other with BB guns, which we did also. I did that too, though. Uh, we used to throw firecrackers at each other. Didn't do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, there were some really terrible things. Oh, dude, you know what one thing we used to do baseball is you had to stand at second base and the other person would stand up against the backstop behind the plate and you just get to whip it at them and they couldn't move. They had to put their hands behind their back. Yo, dude, that... Everybody was wearing cups, right? I was. You're smart. Yeah. Um, I well, never you're get... not smart because you got roped into doing that. Did yeah. you ever get hit? Oh, yeah. How many times? And where was the worst spot? Right in the fucking sternum. Oof. I saw it coming the whole way. And the problem is if you move, you got it worse. What, they got to scoot up or something? Like from the pitcher's mound? Oh, everyone would hold you down. They what wouldn't the throw the ball f- at you, but it was a little bit of a you had if someone was gonna get hit, you gotta you had to take it. What the fuck is wrong with you guys? Yeah, we were fucked up. But you know what we used to do, man? Did you know we used to lay out with baby oil on us and aluminum foil? Like we used to dude, like we, a baked potato? We used to lay out, dude, with straight baby oil and just aluminum. Just for like just Oh yeah, the foil things. Yeah, 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 yeah. D- dude. Can you imagine lay? By the way, for sure we burnt more than burnt because we were literally baking. Cooking. You're yeah. baking your skin. A hundred percent. You're like slow roast. It's like slow roasting a pork in the oven. You're yeah. slow roasting your face. We were microwaving ourselves. Microwaving. We, dude. I remember just dousing myself with baby oil. It's the dumbest and thing. laying out. I, I was. I might as well have been like, "Fuck you, son." Baby, come, come get me, you fuck! Baby oil already done to start out with, but like, had you just been doing the baby oil, maybe we could get around it. But you amplify, you baked yourself like a potato. Ask that your mom. Crazy. I bet you she did the same thing. She Ask your mom. Hundred percent. Can did. I tell you something else? We were so dumb. Like we would go in and just like sit on the couch, and then there'd be like an outline of a person because you had sweat and baby oil. Oh, yeah, it's gross. <laughs> yeah. Those 80s couches smelled like must and dirt. Oh, my God. Yeah, But there was not a lot of safety precaution stuff. You could still smoke on planes in the 80s. Dude, the smoking on the plane. Dude, you could smoke on planes in the 80s. That's crazy to me. I love how they were like, listen, smoking starts in row 19. In row 18, you're fine. (laughs) I'm I'm in the no smoking section. Are you? Are you? Because it's a plane and it's recycled air. We're I, all in the smoking section. I remember sitting in the smoking section on an airline called Eastern Airlines. And I think Eastern was just East Coast up and down the East Coast. Oh, interesting. And we used to fly Eastern to Florida. And we were in the fucking straight up smoking section. For what? Spring break or something? Uh, to go see my Nana and Papa. Oh, okay. Dude, oh, yeah, Nana lives in- the smoking session section on those planes. I can't. And in restaurants, too, you'd be like, smoking section, you're like, but I'm sitting right now, uh, uh, a seat away from it. Yeah, but that's the smoking section. You're not in the smoking section. Now, look, we open it up to a weed smoking section. I'm here to talk. Because that would be lit. I'm so, I remember bartending when you could smoke in bars. And it's crazy. Coming home and feeling like, oh, I smoked two packs of cigarettes tonight. Because I and did. just thinking Stink. like it. Your whole clothes, everything. No, I wouldn't be able to bartend. Oh, I, I, I'm so glad that I, that's not a thing. The no smoking in public thing and and uh, all that I think is spot on. There's some things that I think that we've probably gone a little over, but the uh, the no smoking is such a huge thing. Yeah, I'm so glad you never. You know I smoked cigarettes for a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. You also did chewing tobacco that I threw out when I found you. Fuck. <laughs> I don't remember. I think I was like eight or nine. And then we were on Matilla, huh? 
Were we? I was touring with Cable Guy. But we, but it happened in, I, here's the thing. What I, re, oh. Well, you maybe, threw out, may, well, you threw out di my dip a couple of times. The one that I remember is the one when I, we were at Beeman Park. And I went in to get something out of the car and opened the front door and I saw the red man in the side pocket of the door. And I took it and I talked to you about it and I still threw it out. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Or I made you throw it out. Yeah. Something like that. And then on Matillaha, this was fucking crazy. You were probably 12 or 13. And you found the dip in the car. I would keep it in the car because for some reason, you or your mom always found it in the house. So I'd keep it in the car, buried underneath some mm -hmm. stuff. And you found it. And I had promised you that I wasn't going to dip anymore. Mm -hmm. You were fucking hot, dude. Yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah, I, I was mad. Do you remember what you said to me? No. You trying to die? Is that I was what like, I said? What? And you're like, you trying to die? You trying to kill yourself? I'm like, what? And you're like, I told you said not to dip. Are you trying to die? Do you want to die? Damn. And I was like, no, I don't want to die. And you were like, is that what? And it was a, you were straightforward, dude. Yeah. You were basically like, I don't understand why you're doing this. And you said, you promised me. You promised me. Yeah. You broke your promise. That, those two things hit hard. Are you trying to die and you broke your promise? I was like, all right, I'm done. Yep. But that, and it was hard, man, touring with Larry the Cable Guy. because we Everybody. Were, he that's, I, how, that's how you got back on it. Because when we showed up in the green room, there were two sleeves of dip. Just dip. Yep. And so I would grab one and he would grab one. Yep. And we would dip it up. Yep. Oh, I loved some dip, dude. And some chew. I would put some red man and I would put some gum in the red man when I played baseball in college. That's right. I played baseball. Wait. Is that what people do? And then you could chew it the entire time? I don't know if that's what other people do. That's what I did. I would put two pieces of double bubble in with some red man. That way I could chew it and spit, but it still tasted okay. You know that's what I mean? Really but I could chew it. And it wouldn't, when I ran in the outfield, it wouldn't flake off when I ran. It would stay in a, in a Interesting. ball. Interesting. The you, were, dip, you, you were in a big, you loved double bubble. Oh, dude, I fucking dude love there were points bubble. in time where for Halloween, or for Christmas or your birthday, we were bag we were buying you peat bags that had two hundred and fifty pieces yep. in them. Can I tell you, you loved double bubble? Can I rank for you my three favorite bubble gums? Can I guess? Oh, this is fun. In no particular order. Okay. Double bubble for sure. Nailed it. Big league chew. Top no. three. That original big league chew. I, I thought you loved that. I one. would put that in my top four. That would be four. Okay. I love the sour apple or the grape one. Great, God, great. Jesus. Yep. Other um, is this just bubble gum? Yes, just bubble gum. Yeah. Did you like that sleeve? That like that like pull bubble gum? The hubba bubble one? The ones that came in that little packet? No, the tape. The the yeah, the, yeah, the, the yeah, no. tape one. Nope. Do I know? The and other I will one? tell you something. The big league chew, I, taste wise, it wasn't my favorite. I loved it. I just liked the pulling it out. Yeah, I loved. I loved taste, taste. wise. Here we go. Okay. Double bubble. Bazooka. Bazooka. Dude. Bazooka bubblegum. Yeah, oh with the little comics. Those little square ones. God, Bazooka. Dude, loved those. Bubble Yum Original. Bubble Yum. Fuck is Bubble Yum? Do you not know what Bubble Yum is? By the way, it doesn't sound like we're talking about bubble gum anymore. And. <laughs> <laughs> With the fucking duck. Bubble Yum original. Yeah, with that fucking that duck with the, Dude. With the choker on it. Yeah, and hit yeah. me with some bubblicious. I would take a watermelon or a sour apple bubblicious. Double bubble. Yeah, fucking you best. fucking, yeah. Yeah, we used to buy you packs and pa bags of double bubble. Double bubble. But bazooka is my all time. I think you really got into that double bubble and stuff though when, when you got off the chew. Yes. That's what helped because yes. you were like, I need something to yes. fucking like, it's like an oral fixation thing. You were like, yep. I just need something. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right, dude, that was a quick hour. Well, yeah. The first half hour, I don't remember what, like the first half hour was like not even stuff on the list. It was just us going back and forth with other things and uh, the weekend on the road and all that stuff. It was that, great. That's how that works. Yeah. Um, all right. So listen, got, yeah, go ahead. We got five minutes real quick. We're going to do this in two minutes. Um, no doubt is reuniting for Coachella this year. Mm -hmm. The Coachella lineup, other than that, is absolutely garbage. If you could have one, if you could have Coachella lineup, but I'm only going to ask you for headliners. One headliner Friday, one headliner Saturday, one headliner Sunday. 
How are they usually organized? Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The best goes when? The uh, no, they. That's the thing though. Is like, I think this lineup though, like this year, it's Lana Del Rey on Friday. Love it. Tyler the Creator Saturday. Mm. Doja Cat on Sunday. Mm. There's no me, doubt. No doubt is like like uh, it's like a guest performance. I think they're on Sunday as well. Okay. I bet you they don't want to do. Uh, they don't want to pay Doja for a full hour fifteen set of hers. So her and no doubt might be splitting it. Um, Who are my three? Who are your three? Because look, for me, like all, all time three, yeah, all time. Like for me this year, like Lana, I think closes it should close out because Lana as an artist and who she is, like is like the epitome of Coachella. Like that's what the girlies are gonna go see is Lana. So okay. I think Lana and Doja should have been switched, but obviously I'm not going because I hate the Lana. So because I don't know Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and how they're supposed to go and who's supposed to do when, I will do. I will say just judging by the one festival I went to, it seemed like it went Saturday biggest headliner, Friday second biggest, Sunday uh, last. Uh, that's how it was set up at Desert Trip. Okay, usually at Coachella. Like I'm thinking for Coachella, you want to have someone who starts the weekend off amazing. Yep. You want to have someone on Saturday who keeps those vibes going and a great another great production set and everything's great. But on Sunday, you want to have someone that when you talk about it, you're like they closed out the festival the best way they did. Okay, like Drake did one year, The Weekend did one year, and like pass pass. No, no, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like giant production okay. worthy stuff. So I open with Nirvana. Whoa. Okay. Okay, setting a tone for the weekend. I like that. The second night is the only one, and I'm going to tell you why I can't decide. I'd like one's, one band's music more, but I think one band would be better to see live. Live, okay. So, Saturday night, you, you, I can't believe I'm going to say this. Not the Beatles. I'm going to go with Zeppelin. Interesting, okay. Because I think that show... Hard, hard to say. I don't know. I feel like I feel like in this modern day and age, with the Beatles' music, with how trippy their covers were and their music and their lyrics, I feel like the production value for that set would be outstanding. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Like, but are we? Here's the thing. Hard for me to modernize them. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And so I'm just as Zeppelin feels like. Th those, especially with Jimmy Page and his solos, it feels very festival. Yeah. I know who you're going for Sunday. Rage Against the Machine. Prince. Oh. Okay. That's that's also great. That's great. That's yeah. I, yeah. I think I go Nirvana, Zeppelin, Prince, or Nirvana, Beatles, Prince. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Look, dude, I've seen Prince a couple times. Yep. And I also think in a festival, what you want is you want somebody to be able to play bangers for an hour. Yeah. Nirvana bangers for an hour. Zeppelin bangers Zeppelin for an hour. Zeppelin Beatles bangers for however long you want them to go. Beatles could bang for the whole festival. Prince bangers for an hour, dude. Hour plus. Dude, at least. And so I that's that's it for me. And okay. and also I would want a little variation in my music. That's yeah. why I'm picking those. Yeah, two. yeah. I I would want the variation as well for me, but I'm just such in like a rap oriented kind of phase right now. But I think if I would do it, I'd probably do like I, it would be two hip hop artists and then one kind of just like different one. I'm probably going. I'm going to start off the weekend with J Cole, just to just get everything in. He put out. He's going to have an album coming out soon, but all of his stuff, his set, is outstanding. On Saturday, I'm going to go Greta Van Fleet. Whoa! Good and one. just kind of have a different vibe for a Saturday, Fuck but yeah. still have the good energy one. absolutely carried through the weekend. And then on Sunday, just because I'm thinking production value, and but I've already seen him twice, and production value was 50-50 on both of them, so I may switch it. I was going to say Drake, because his... No Eminem? Dude, his performances are probably pouring shit. Really? He's not doing much on stage. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. His, his, his imagery is probably cool. But he's not doing much on stage. Okay. And I'm, I'm not taking a bag at Eminem. I fucking love Eminem. Like, you do. That's your dude. I love Eminem. Yeah. I've loved him for a very long time. And I've gone back into his no. old, his older stuff when I was a little older and was able to, you know, develop, like, to be able to comprehend his older things. Mm -hmm. But I love him. I just don't think that would be, like, a crazy concert to witness. I feel like it would be more crazy if we saw him do a guest appearance somewhere in Detroit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Like, on, uh, like, like when he did with Sheeran's. 50. Or like when he did with, or what he did with 50 Cent. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
I mean, you could also throw Ed Sheeran in there. I've seen him perform, and it's I would love to see Ed Sheeran. Wizardry. Yep. Oh, by the way, Teddy Swims is here in Vegas at the Cosmo, March 24th. It's a Sunday. We're here. 100% we're going. Just let me know. 100% we're going. Just let me know. It's the week after my birthday. Uh, now, third day, I'm just going to get to Drake right now because I gave more thought. Or I, I put the question down, and I didn't put enough thought into it, but I will have a better answer. But, like, I'd probably go Drake, just production value. Uh, I can't ever see Travis again because PTSD. Yeah. Um, trying to think of other people that I've been listening Jay to. Cole? I did J. Cole on Friday. Oh, that's right. I'd go see Don Tolliver. Like, Don Tolliver's a great Love performer. that. You've been playing it for Yeah, me. I've been playing. Y'all you know, like, the, at least people my age are like this. I've been getting my dad on some Donnie T. Fucking. Yeah. I also do but listen to those Miguel albums. They're oh, fucking dude. so good. He's awesome. Holy shit. Miguel's amazing. They're so good. He hasn't put an album out since like 2017 or something like I've that. I've been listening nonstop on my walks to that. They're so he's, good. He's outstanding. Yeah, so good. He's outstanding. Tell everybody. Y'all, again, new listeners, old listeners, thank you, thank you, thank you. None of this would be possible without any of you guys. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for telling a friend, for family members, all that. But hey, keep doing it. Keep telling people that word of mouth is you guys ask how you can help. That's all we ask for. Tell a friend, man. Tell a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Um, this weekend, we're in Indianapolis. Uh, last weekend of January, we're in Vancouver. Um, all dates, so comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates and tickets. Um, we're literally every weekend pretty much nonstop until, the, until Memorial Day. On that note also, Vancouver, my dad is filming his special that weekend. It's the 27th and or yeah, no, 26th and 27th of January. Come out, come show out. It's going to be fucking amazing. Also, May 9th, May 9th, May 9th, we are in Los Angeles at the Bourbon Room on Hollywood Boulevard at Netflix is a Joke Comedy Festival. Y'all, come out. I'll say it every time. Tell your boyfriend, tell your girlfriend, tell your mom, tell your dad, tell people you hate, tell people you love, tell your side chick, tell, tell your teachers, tell everybody. Come sell that bitch out. We're going to have a really good time. It's going to be the best set that I think uh, I'm going to make sure it's the best set I've ever done yeah. in my entire life. I would say this too. I, 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 I look at the podcast numbers and we have LA and New York are always in our top five. So, and those are the two shows that we would ask. Oh, the Gramercy as well. Buy your tickets early. If you're asking how you can support us, it makes us look good if we can sell tickets ahead of time. Yeah. At the Gramercy in April, comedianjoshwolf.com for tickets. I believe it's April 13th. And, uh, okay, maybe. I think it's April 13th. And uh, May 9th in um, LA. LA. So I know there are a lot of people listening in LA. If you can do us a favor and go buy those tickets and now ski. That would be amazing. It makes us look good. Comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. And let me just say this. If you like beer, but you don't want to get drunk, Best Day Brewing is the best non-alcoholic beer you are ever going to taste in your life skate. Yep. Not only that, man, as somebody who doesn't drink but misses cracking open a beer, you like that sound effect. It's almost as bad as your hat. If you guys like it, like I do, cracking open that can and drinking that beer and being able to do it with you and your sister and your brother, um, for me, is so cool. It's such a tasty beer. Uh, and the people who run the company are such good people. We're not talking about a big conglomerate here. Jim is a good, good dude. Mm -hmm. He runs his company the right way. The people who work for him are good fucking people. Uh, best day brewing, guys. Great beer. Great people. Give it a shot. Um, and there we go. Um, uh, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates and tickets. Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. Uh, it's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. Thank you guys again. Indy, we'll, we'll, we will see you guys soon. I hope, that, I hope that picture I saw of a basketball court being built in your guys' airport is real for All-Star Weekend. Let's go. Because I can't wait to see all the 40-year-old old heads with torn ACLs walking to flights. Thank you guys so much. Do something nice for somebody today. Tell them you love them. Go to a dog shelter. Go donate. Go walk a dog. Go adopt a dog. Go help out the puppies and go help out your friends and people. We love you guys. Love you, everybody. Later. Oh, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. Oh, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. You know me. I have an ADHD brain. I'm fidgety. That's just kind of person I am, so I know if I'm on stage with no hat on, I'm going to be running my hand through my hair every 37 seconds, and that's going to get distracting. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I think you should run it through that luscious hair. People don't like that. Yeah, but I... And then slow-mo it. But it's going to bug me knowing I'm doing it every 35 seconds. You should run your hand through your hair in slow motion, 
and then I'll, I'll have the DJ play. Ooh, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. So we, you are a Sasquatch guy. I'm a cryptid guy, or cryptoid guy, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. The cryptids and cryptoids. I don't think the Sasquatch is technically, I don't know, technically a cryptid. You know what I'm talking about. Though. I don't like, know what a cryptid is. So a cryptid is like a skinwalker, or a mothman, or the chupacabra, or legend. Mythical. Right. But they're called cryptids. Okay. So, for me, I'm a big cryptid guy. You know why? Because why the fuck not? I'm in a shirt that says, let's summon demons. Um, and it's got pentagrams all over it. Yeah, and I'm also in a Winnie the Pooh uh, headband. Winnie the Pooh, 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 Winnie the Pooh. Hey man. Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh. Hey man.